You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 27th of March and I'm Kate from Milford. This week in economic news, the Federal Reserve increased the cash rate by 25 basis points, taking the Fed funds rate to 4.75% to 5%, which was largely expected by the time of the print, with the market implying an 85% chance beforehand. The Fed dot plot, which summarises the FOMC's outlook for the cash rate, was broadly hawkish, with not a single member lowering their forecasts for where the rates will be by the end of this year and the terminal rate projections remained unchanged at 5.1%. The Fed statement talked down the US banking crisis, reiterated their inflation targeting, and stated they have a long way to go to get inflation to 2%. US regional banks are still in the limelight, with PacWest seeking capital as they saw 20% of deposit outflows since the start of this year. Moving to the UK... The CPI print was a big beat to consensus on top line and core data. Top line was 10.5% year on year, compared to expectations of 9.9%, and the core reached 6.2% versus 5.7% expected. The drivers of the higher CPI print was higher food and drink prices and increases in the services sector inflation. Off the back of the hot inflation print, the Bank of England increased their cash rate by 25 basis points, taking the cash rate to 4.25%. In equity news, UBS announced it will buy Credit Suisse for US$2 billion in a government-brokered deal aimed at containing the spread of a potential banking crisis. The all-share takeover is at a 75% discount to Credit Suisse's previous close price. UBS originally offered one billion US dollars. However, this deal was refused. The Swiss National Bank has offered UBS a one hundred billion dollar liquidity line and granted them a nine point seven billion dollar guarantee on Credit Suisse losses. On the back of this takeover, Credit Suisse's additional Tier One bonds were written down to zero, while equity holders will still receive some compensation. AT One bonds are a type of convertible bond, which typical hierarchy of losses, which suggest ranks higher than equity when banks fail. But because Credit Suisse's demise has not followed a traditional bankruptcy, apparently the same rules do not apply. However, other banking regulators in the EU have reassured AT1 investors more broadly that they would take priority over shareholders in the event of future bank crises. In other equity news... Fintech giant Block share price fell 15% in New York trading after Heidenberg Research released a short report that alleged the company's cash app is enabling fraudulent behaviour. In a statement, Block responded with, We have reviewed the full report in the context of our own data and believe it's designed to deceive and confuse investors. And they will be working with the US Securities Exchange Commission and explore legal action against the Heidenberg research. And finally, in equity news, Australian storage owner and operator National Storage REIT has raised $300 million in an institutional placement, coming to market at a 4-7% to 7% discount to the previous close price. The funds will be used to improve the balance sheet and support developments and acquisitions. Turning to the week ahead, the Australian retail sales print is expected to decline to 0.4% from 1.9% previously. We can also expect the Australian monthly CPI data print. Consensus is forecasting CPI to be 7.1%, down from 4.7%. Over to the US. We will get the US House Price Data Index print, which is expected to be negative 0.2% month on month, and to be 5.7% year on year. The US Conference Board Consumer Confidence Data will also come out, which measures the level of confidence in the economy. It is expected to decline from 102.9 to 101. And finally, fourth quarter US GDP data will be released, which is expected to be 2.7%. This is down from 3.3% previously. Thank you for listening and we will see you next week.